What were some of my biggest mistakes? Let's talk about it. I'm Kenny Molotov, licensed plumber, professional magician, and entertainer. On this channel, I go through the ins and outs of my career in plumbing. I take you through a day in the life, and we talk tools, theory, and mindset. I'm trying to give you an arsenal of knowledge and an online resource so you can take this trade head on and find yourself successful on the other end. Click subscribe, hit that bell notification, and let's talk pipes. Peeps, Kenny Molotov here in the studio, and I wanted to do this video even though I'm a little bit apprehensive about it because, you know, I'm shedding light on my human side. I've made plenty of mistakes in my career, and I wanted to walk you through a few of them so that you learn from them. I can give you also some pointers on how to avoid them for next time. I think it'll be a little bit of fun, and just to remind you that, hey, I'm still making mistakes, but look how far I've come in comparison to the mistakes. So let's go ahead and talk about number one. So the first mistake that I made a long time ago, and I, this was definitely in my first year of apprenticeship, Dad had shut the riser to a building. Or he went downstairs to shut the riser to a building. So he said to me, okay, look, as soon as we're done shutting the riser, you can go ahead and take off this toilet supply line. So Dad goes downstairs, and for the first time in a long time, I have a, a pair of pliers in my hand. And I'm thinking to myself, man, I could finally do something. So I'm sitting there twiddling my thumbs, thinking to myself, did he, did he shut the water uh, like is it shut now because and I'm really eager to show him that I know how to take off a, a toilet supply line like I was barely getting my hands on the tools I remember how eager I was so I decided you know what all right why don't I just go ahead and just undo this supply line from the valve just a little bit without turning off the valve peeps you know what I'm saying without turning off the valves that's how green I was so I start undoing it and what I noticed the last time I took a toilet supply line off is that when the valve is shut, of course. There's a little bit of water between inside the supply line itself, right? So a little bit of water is going to trickle out. Nothing too dangerous. Nothing to worry about. So, so dad goes downstairs. I've waited five minutes. I start undoing the supply line from the valve itself. And I see a little bit of water coming out. I'm thinking, okay, that's probably the water inside the supply line. You know, everything's fine. I undo it a little bit more. Man, there's, there's, there's like a lot of water coming from the supply line. I do it a little bit more. Man, Man, it sounds like it's spraying a little bit. Like there's a little bit of a shh. And I'm going, uh, maybe it's not off yet. No, it's, it's probably not off. But by this point, the person renting the unit is walking by and he sees this water on the floor and he's going in his head. He, he was nice enough not to say, he's going, what's wrong with this kid? So now I have to close the supply line a little bit and he's throwing towels at me. And look, I didn't flood the place, but I definitely learned early on that there's a way better protocol in regards to taking off a supply line. So here's what you're supposed to do, okay? The very first thing that you're supposed to do is shut the valve to the toilet. That way, if the riser's not shut, at least that valve is holding on top of that. Once you do that, you flush the toilet. You don't touch the supply line. You shut the valve, you flush the toilet, it flushes. If you don't hear it filling up again, hey, you're in a good position. The valve is shut, now you can take off the supply line. But it really came down to how eager I was to show my dad that I could do it that kind of put me in that bad situation and also me not asking enough questions on the job site before deciding to do something the silver lining is is that I was prepared enough to know not to take the entire thing off altogether so I all I had to do was close it tight it saved a really bad situation that could have happened so peeps if you are taking off the supply line first of all make sure you ask your journey person if that's the right thing to do. Second of all, make sure they're over your shoulder watching. You know, it's better for them to be there. And third of all, close that valve, flush that toilet. If the tank's not filling up, you're A-OK -okay to take off that supply line. You know what I'm saying? All right, so as embarrassing as it is, let's get on to my second major mistake. So we had to shut a riser again. After you shut a riser, what you're supposed to do is go down and drain the line because if you're working from the eighth floor, there's still water in that line. You gotta go at minimum to seven to drain it. So I went down to one and I drained it inside the person's shower, but I also turned on their vanities. Now, one thing that you have to know is that we typically
basically stick to the shower now and we don't turn on the va vanities for this exact reason. So here's what happens. The faucets that were inside this unit were really fancy and I think they were like German imported faucets. So the way they worked, it was a three piece faucet and you had the two knobs and they turned a certain direction to turn them on and a certain direction to turn them off. But the problem is, is that they were like forked or crossed and you couldn't tell if turning it to the left was shutting it off or turning it to the right was shutting it off. That was the major issue that I had when we went to go turn on the riser afterwards. So I had gone back into the unit after we did the repair. And as I'm standing there trying to turn it off and I'm thinking to myself, wait a minute, does it turn off counterclockwise? One counterclockwise, one clockwise? Or do they go against each other? Or do they both go in the same direction? I couldn't remember. So I thought I had shut them off. Then we turn on the riser and I'm not in the unit anymore. We turn on the riser and thankfully I thought to myself, you know what? I should just go double check. And I walk into this unit just to hear water going and it's going shh. And as I get there, I see the water just got to flood level rim, which means water's coming out and hitting the floor. And there wasn't a ton of water on the floor, thankfully. But here's where it got a little bit messy. I probably shouldn't tell you this part, but I figure, you know, we're a community. You got to know how I screwed up. This is what happened. So... <laughs> So I'm panicking because I'm thinking to myself, I don't know how much water is on this floor. I see these two towels hanging and I grab these towels and I throw them on the floor and I turned off the faucets, obviously. I throw them on the floor and I'm using them and the cleaning lady walks in and the cleaning lady loses it on me. Just, just, she inhales and she starts going. What are you doing? I can't believe you did this, blah, blah, blah. And I'm thinking that she's freaking out about the water on the floor and I'm in my head going, oh my goodness, she's going to tell everybody I'm going to get blasted by uh, the owners of the unit. Like I'm really worried. So I call up dad and I go, dad, are you at the truck? He goes, yeah. I go, you need to bring the shop vac. Nah. He didn't ask any questions. He went, okay. And he started sprinting. All right. So this lady's yelling at me. Dad walks in. And when he walks in with the shop vac, he looks at the situation. And I noticed that his look of panic went to kind of relief because he thought there was a lot of water on the floor and there wasn't. And these two towels did a lot of the work for us. So the lady's yelling and dad's like, look, it's okay, madam. There's not a lot of water just to eventually realize she's not yelling about the water at all. She doesn't care about the water. She's upset. I took the towels off the rack and I threw them on the floor. So when we realized that she was like, these are expensive. And here's the funny thing about this story. I didn't even remember taking the towels and throwing them on the floor. That was what was really messing me up about it as she was yelling at me about these towels. I couldn't remember if I grabbed them off the bottom or off. The, I don't remember how it happened. I was in such panic mode that I just went ahead and I threw things down, I guess. As she's yelling at me, I'm like, what are you talking about with the towels? And then she starts describing how expensive they are and more so the fact that she has to do laundry now that I finally, I said, oh, you know what? I'm sorry. I panicked. I, I messed up. And the moment I apologized to her, she actually she took a step back because I was arguing with her the whole time thinking that she was upset about the water. She wasn't. She was mad about these towels. <laughs> I'm freaking about water damage. And she's like, dude, now I got to do laundry again. And so the moment I realized she was yelling about the towels, I said, madam, look, I'm so sorry. I panicked. I didn't know what to do. And I guess I took them off and I threw them on the floor. And as soon as I apologized, she, she put down the guns, you know, she's like, oh no, it's okay. You know, I got to do some laundry, but it's okay. And I apologized again. She goes, no, no, it's fine. Don't worry. And she walked out and it was so stressful. Just not knowing which way the knobs turn off the faucet was a really big deal. So if there's anything we can learn from this story, peeps, it's that if you turn on a faucet, especially if it's a three piece and it's forked or it's prong, whatever you call them, it's crossed. Pay attention to which way they turned on. Did they both turn on in the same direction or did they go against each other? Just pay attention to that and be respectful to the cleaning ladies, please. And make sure that if they're upset about the towel, you apologize for the towels. Okay, one of my biggest mistakes, number three. 
peeps, this was a bad one. So here's what happens. It's my birthday. Listen to me again. It's my birthday. And we go into a, one of my favorite customers' house, by the way. He's one of the sweetest individuals that I know. He decides to install two Toto toilets. Now, what you have to know about Toto is Toto is kind of like a mid-range toilet. You could spend anywhere between 400 and if you really want to go high-end on the Toto side, you could go up to 800 bucks. I'm sure they have $1,000 Toto toilets, but here's what happens. I'm upstairs. I'm installing this toilet, put it down on the flange and the gasket. I feel the gasket's good. I start tightening the bolts. I get up and I start walking away because I got to go get the tank and all of a sudden I hear cling and I walk over and I look down and the Toto toilet has a really long base, really long. And the corner of the base cracked off completely and slid out. The porcelain broke and I'm standing there like this going, I don't know what happened. So the base of the toilet's broken on this $400 toilet. So I'm sitting there going, this is my birthday present. This is the curveball I get for my birthday present. So now I got to do the call of Shane, which is dad, can you come here for a second? And I totally had my tail between my legs. You know what I'm saying? Dad walks over and he looks down and he gives me that look of like, are you serious? And I look at him like, I don't know what happened. Like I legitimately didn't do it. I tightened it. I walked away and then it clinked. Now look, it is absolutely my fault. But at the same time, what you have to know is the floor wasn't level and that's why it happened the way it happened. But also I shouldn't have tightened it as hard as I tightened it. So here's what ends up happening. It devastated me, eh? Especially since I love the customer, it devastated me because I knew how bad of a situation I was putting us all in. So we call him over. He comes over and looks at it. And the first thing that came to his mind was, oh, don't worry, man. You, you have clear silicone, right? Well, if you clear silicone, it, it won't even show. And he put it up against it. And he's like, man, it's like a hairline fracture or whatever. But then we opted not to do that because his wife bought the toilet. And uh, his wife's not as forgiving as him. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like she was, she would have blasted everybody. So um, he was a really sweet customer. And he goes, you know what? I, I really don't want to put this on you guys. So I'm going to take this toilet. We're going to install it at the building, uh, which is his factory. And he goes, and I'm going to grab a brand new toilet for this room. And I, I said, man, I'm so sorry. He goes, are you kidding me, man? I know you wouldn't do this purposely. Don't worry about it. And he covered that cost for us. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, that's what I mean. One of the sweetest customers that we have. Anytime he calls us out, we go right away. You know what I'm saying? Because he's just so kind hearted. He'll bat for you. In other words, he knows that you're not trying to uh, be sloppy with the work. He sees that when I work, I put my effort in and he knows that, you know, I'm up and coming and I'm learning. So he really had my back that day and I will forever be grateful to him. But that was on my birthday and the rest of the day was miserable because of it, because I couldn't get over that gift. Guilt, but you gotta know, you gotta be careful when you set the toilet down. When you start tightening the bolts, you have to tighten very slowly. You gotta make sure the wobble goes away, but you don't ever over crank the toilet because not only can the base break, but also you can rip out the flange from below. You can break the flange from below. You have to be very, um, what's the word? Very non heavy handed with toilet tightening, in other words. And that's what I learned from that job site right there. All right. Right. Mistake number four, and I am sad to say I've made this mistake more than once. Don't kill me, peeps, but it's happened, and I work really hard for it not to happen now. And it's this. You're snaking a drain, but you're at an e elevated level. You're snaking this drain, and it's going down a vertical pipe just to eventually realize, oh, the snake is done. Oh, it's, it's out of my K39. Oh, gravity is taking the snake. Oh, let me try to grab it. Gone. Snake goes down the drain like your hopes and dreams. You know what I'm saying, peeps? So here's something I've done twice. And I remember doing it each time because, man, let me tell you, the panic that goes through your body when the snake leaves your machine and is never coming back was legit. It's something that's going to remain with you for the rest of your life. Here's the good thing about it, and here's how I made Make sure it doesn't happen again. The good thing about it is in both circumstances, we were able to retrieve the snake. Because the worst thing that you can 
imagine is a snake goes down a person's main drain and it just sits there. Water isn't gonna take the snake out into the sewer because it's too heavy for water to take into the sewer. You need a very large discharge in order to be able to do that. So thankfully, both times we were able to retrieve it. The first time it happened with my K39, which is a handheld machine that when you pull the trigger, it spins the snake into the drain. What you normally do with the K39 is you lock it, you feed it, you let go, and it basically continues the snake going. You lock it, you feed it, open. Lock it, feed it, open. And on the way out, I opened and I pulled out and the snake came out at the same time, but it was still going down the drain, so momentum took it. But thankfully, dad knew the building well enough that he traced the line and found the clean out where the snake was sitting. That was one of those moments where my journey person, also my father, was a superhero in my eyes because the guilt automatically went away when he got that snake. It automatically, I felt so much better. Anytime I go in with the K39 now, first of all, I don't do large distances with the K39 unless I absolutely have to. Second of all, anytime I'm feeding it in, I will actually pull it out a little bit. I'll stop the rotation. I'll unhinge it. If I have to, I'll hand feed it and then I'll lock it and I'll do it again. So in other words, especially when I'm getting further and further into the drain, the K39, I'm very careful to make sure that I'm not just yanking it out so that the snake goes in. The second time that I made this mistake was actually with the K50. Now, the K50 has a tendency to get really heavy really quick. Let's not even talk about the K1500. If that thing leaves your hand, game over. I've had situations, Dad and I have had situations where we couldn't pull it out of the drain. It was that heavy, but here's what you have to know. I'm gonna do an entire video on the K50 for you so you can see how I lock this in. There's a way of locking in the coil so that it doesn't leave you. And there's a couple of tricks that we have to make sure that that doesn't happen. But what was happening is, is I'm pulling down the lever, uh, letting it spin, I'm feeding it, letting it spin, feeding it, letting it spin, and then all of a sudden, I have to get the next coil. So I take the snake here, I leave it just like so slowly to see if it will not fly into the drain. And it looks like it's holding. I go to grab my next coil and all of a sudden I hear, doof, doof. I look, the snake's gone. Disappeared like a magic trick. It's gone. And the owner saw the whole thing and he jumped up to try to catch it. But no, he couldn't, it was gone. And he looks at me, he goes, what do we do now? Oh man, let me tell you the panic because he's got to finish basement all right and that's where it went down so we had to go downstairs thankfully the tenant wasn't home we had access to the unit we walk in we find the bulkhead we had to cut a small hole to access the clean out and there it is I'm looking at the snake right there we had to do a little bit of damage to get to it I felt really guilty and that cost was on us at least we were able to retrieve the snake again which was also a blessing if that snake stays in there anytime toilet paper is flushed it's gonna catch that snake or if anything larger flushes, it's gonna get caught on that snake and you're just gonna have bigger and bigger issues down the road. So retrieving it was always a blessing. So now what I make sure to do is that before I leave the snake, I lock it in and I'm gonna show that to you in the K50 video when I'm able to make it. But make sure that you lock your coils before leaving them alone. Okay, my fifth and final mistake that I wanna let you all know about this was, this was really, it's one of those stories that I tell people at parties just to let them know how far I've come. All right, so again, this is our first year of apprenticeship, or yeah, I think it's the first year of apprenticeship. We go to a job site, and on the job site, again, like my biggest frustration in my first year, and first couple of years, was I was never getting my hands on the tools, so I was always bugging dad to get my hands on the tools. So dad and I would get into arguments in the first couple of years because of this. So here's what happened. We get to a job site, and we're renovating a basement, and dad finally gives me a job, and he goes, okay, what what I want you to do is drill a hole right here. We're gonna have to feed a pipe through here. I go, perfect, let's do it. I go grab my drill, I get the right hole saw, and then dad points with his flashlight to a wire, an electrical wire going through, which is a 110 wire. And he goes, look, that's not live, but don't hit that wire on the way out because it's right on top of the wood that I have to go through. I go, I got it. He goes, no, no, seriously, you gotta watch for that wire. Make sure you don't hit it. I go, no problem, I got it. He goes, look, it's a lot of damage to do. Make sure I go I'm not an idiot I got this and I said those words I swear on my life I said those words so peeps I'm drilling a hole upwards and it's above my head and it's like at 
the height of where the ceiling's gonna be, right? So I'm drilling a hole upwards. And as you know, if you're drilling a hole a lot of times, if you're putting in a lot of force into it, you're gonna blast through that wall. So actually, as you get better at drilling holes, you'll learn at the end how to kind of maintain your, your, drill it, your drill in that situation. But here's what I'm doing. The wire's here and the wood is here. So I'm drilling upwards. And what I do is I take the wire and I lift it up. What I should have done was lift it towards me because it clears the entire wood, but I lifted it up and I lifted it from the side. So I'm going and I'm like, man, finally I get to do this. And I'm sweating because drilling altogether is something you got to get used to. But drilling against gravity is something, man, even to this day would make me sweat. So I'm drilling against gravity. I got this wire up here. Boom. I fly through the wood and boom, I fly through the wire, peeps. The wire was decimated when I was done with it, man. There were two wires when I was done and I'm sitting there going ah, my dad is gonna be so mad when he sees this and I just feel like such an idiot like such a fool and I'm sitting there going man what do you do like he told you three times and you said look I'm not an idiot I got <laughs> So, man, I had to do the call of shame a second time. I had to go, Dad. <laughs> Dad walks over and I go, Dad. <laughs> I hit the wire and dad looks at me and goes, you gotta be kidding me. I go, dad, I'm sorry, man. I don't know what happened. You shouldn't be letting me drill. I'm a first year apprentice. And I started trying to put the blame on him. <laughs> it was a joke though. And dad actually handled it really well. He basically goes, all right, it's fine. I'll let the owner know. We'll cover the cost. Just be careful because if that wire was live, this would have been a different conversation altogether. And that's exactly the lesson that I learned. Dad what had his head in the right space. He knew the wire wasn't live, he tested it. But he was trying to allow me to learn. And then he was reminding me at the end, the actual dangers in place. Okay, you screw up a wire, they gotta run a new wire, we gotta pay money out of our pockets. If you can solve a problem with money, it's not that big of a problem. There are things you can't solve with money and one of those things is health. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes money doesn't help with health. So dad was reminding me the values on the job site, which is look, your life is at stake here. We have to be careful. if. If that was a live wire, you could have been electrocuted. That would have been a different issue altogether. And that's why we need responsible journey persons that are watching out for our, our apprentices and are also allowing them to learn on the site as well. So peeps, that was five different major mistakes I've made in my apprenticeship and uh, things that I've definitely been imprinted by. Uh, we have entire different protocols now because of some of these mistakes that I've made, which is what it takes, unfortunately, to learn. You know what I'm saying? It fortunately and unfortunately is the best way to learn trial and error. So please learn from my mistakes. Now you know a few stories that really let you realize that look, I'm just human just like you. I've made a ton of mistakes in my past and I'm not done making mistakes in my future. You know, like things are going to come up and maybe I'll be doing another video like this in the next year or couple of years. Let me know what you thought about this video. Let's share some of the mistakes you might have bumped into or if you've bumped into these mistakes themselves. It'd be really interesting to see the community talk about this specific topic, and I'll see you plumbers very soon. Kenny Molotov, guys. Peace, baby. I cannot really benedictic to you. All of my attention I've been giving to you. Caught up in my feelings, I got feelings for you. Caught up in my feelings, I got feelings.